Diving back into this headstrong Princeton kind of thing, the little king, uh, after the previous video where I showed just the most basic changes of tightening all the hardware so all the grounds are actually grounded, and uh, making the safety change to the AC safety cable ground and fusing the hot instead of the neutral and all that. That's the minimal level of stuff to make this amp much quieter and better behaved. But the owner wanted it done all the way right, and so I was glad to. So instead of having the bus wire across the back of these pots with all the grounds here coming with the little yellow wires to the bus wire, I removed the bus wire and the uh, resistors are just going to the backs of those pots and the reverb and volume are just going there as well. If this were a CTS pot, I would have done it here like they did in the old fenders, but since they already had a solder joint here, uh, that was fine to, to use this little bit of wire. Uh, anyway, I replaced the yellow wire with black just so it stood out more, obviously as ground. And instead of coming from the top of the board, I loosened uh, the screws holding the board in place and brought the new wire up through the eyelet and then clamped over for some mechanical support. So it's approaching from the bottom. Uh, in the process of loosening these screws, I discovered that uh, these screws go all the way through the chassis. On the other side, there are some caps nuts, but the caps nuts were never fully tightened. They had put some kind of Loctite-esque stuff, kind of a gummy sealant on the thread so that it wouldn't vibrate loose, but the, the caps nuts had never been tight. The bias board was very loose. These were pretty loose as well. And um, I have tightened these when I put it back together. I drilled one hole here and I put in, this is a number eight. I wanted to use a number six, but I couldn't find the right bit for a, a six and I already had the bit for the eight out. Anyway, there's a number eight ground lug here. And so this cathode and this cathode and this cathode and this cathode are all coming over here to this point by the input jack. Down here at the power tube end of things, I removed the terminal strips that are mounted to the transformer mounting hardware and put the caps nuts back in place so the transformer is nice and tight. Then I drilled here and here, and there's a ground lug here, which is going to the bias ground by itself. Only the bias is here. On the old fenders, it's over here, but because this chassis has a lip, I couldn't really drill out over here. So here it is. And the HT center tap and all the filter cap grounds are going to this one right here by itself, not shared with anything else. In an old fender, they'd be here, and the bias would be over here, but there wasn't really room here between this cap and the transformer to do after the amp was assembled. In, in, if you're building one of these, it'd be easy to drill the holes ahead of time, put these screws in ahead of time before we mount the transformers, and then you can get tight squeezes in. But this is electronically absolutely fine. And so we have the noisy ground here. We've got the ground for the AC safety cable over here. We've got the bias ground here and the output tube cathode grounds, which before were independently going over to the terminal strip here. This one is now going to this one, so eight to eight. And this one is going to one of the negatives on the speaker jacks because it's a handy chassis solder point that's already there without having to drill anything. As long as it has a good ground connection and as long as the output jack is tight, which it is now, that should be fine. And that's the thing that really gets me. Easier to wire. It is easier and faster to do this than to do that bus wire across the back of the pots. So we have all the preamp grounds, all the cathodes coming here. The pots are grounded to the chassis right next to it. The input jacks are grounded to the chassis right next to it. This is very simple. Um, I don't understand why someone would do it the more convoluted, complicated way that has poor results. Now this app now is very quiet and sounds really good with the noise removed. Imagine that. So let's hear a little bit of it. This is the K-Line Springfield straight into the amp. I've got an old Accutronics from the 70s plugged in for now. We're gonna change out the tank on this thing and get the guys some uh, braided metal RCA cables just because they're pretty. And other than that, the amp sounds great. Uh, this is running into the um, Alessandro by Eminence that came, came with it. It's got the Royer on it. I've noticed in the last uh, month or so, we have a lot of new subscribers. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Since you probably don't know, um, when I was about 21, 22 years old, my left hand went into a wood planer and that finger got all messed up and had skin grafts and had pretty serious nerve damage. So my fingers, uh, these two fingers don't work very fast and it affects this one. I lost a lot of speed and dexterity on my left hand. And so I used to be a much better player. I remember how to do it, 
but uh, don't come to my channel expecting badass chops unless you see me get a, a guest player in, which I do from time to time. But I play well enough to um, demonstrate what an amp sounds like. And I play a lot better than Leo and, and Jim Marshall ever did, non-musician and drummer, respectively. So temper your expectations, and you'll enjoy my channel a lot more. <laughs> It's a nice sounding up now that all the buzz and hmm and eh is gone. And the sad thing is, I shouldn't have had to do any of this. This should have come out of the box like this, because this is pretty much how Leo did it. And if you're going to copy what Leo did, copy what Leo actually did. Anyway, thanks for watching.